Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Hope you're having a great morning. Welcome, welcome to our subject. We're going to make a turkey feather catch game <laughs> with Scratch. Let me introduce myself, if so, if you haven't been in one of my classes before. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in George, Evans, Georgia, and also the Harlem Library in Uchi Creek now. Da, 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 da. Let me see if I'm pointing the right way. Our Grove Town Library. That's absolutely right. So very glad that you're here joining me today. So welcome, welcome to our class. Welcome to class. And definitely feel free to post any questions or anything that you have there into the chat. Happy to answer any questions you have. And the biggest question I I'll, I'll always start with is, how can I help? Okay. <laughs> Have you tried using Scratch before? Have you tried making kind of a game or whatever? Uh, some of the things we'll talk about will be a little bit universal. We'll do a brief introduction to Scratch in case this is your first time using Scratch as well. And before we get started, let me go ahead and tell you about some of our other classes that we have going on here. Well, these are the classes we've been doing throughout the month of November. Gobble, 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 gobble. It's uh, Thanksgiving month. <laughs> so the, the last week we've done, uh, well, I'll just say that a few things we've been doing this week is stuff like internet shopping, digital couponing, holiday gadget and gift ideas. Join us for 2.30 for that class. And then next week we're only going to have two days of classes. One of them will be eBay and Facebook Marketplace, Internet Buying and Selling. And on the 25th, we'll be doing Let's Make a Turkey Feather Catch Game again. Okay, so join us for, with that live on the 25th. And then we're going to be doing the second part of our, well, it could be the first part, whichever. It's our, sec our separate little project. On 25th at 2.30, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, Scratch, Let's Draw and Animate a Turkey with Vectors. Okay. And then the 26th will be Thanksgiving Day, so we will not have any classes that day, and we'll be off for the rest of the month. On a little side note, if you have been using RB Digital in the past for your library, uh, res um, excuse me, library uh, eBooks and e audiobooks, do you realize we have now switched over to Libby? So to download the Libby app. And don't search for Columbia County Library, Evans Library, or Grovetown Library. It'll say what library you with. Say Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. Okay. Then click Georgia Download Destination. Enter your library card, and then you can get your free eBooks and free audiobooks. Okay. On a side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to GCHRL. Org for more details or call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 uh, subscribers to our YouTube channel, we can get our own customized YouTube address. Okay, Or search YouTube for GCHRL videos and our channel will pull right up all right so let's go back like i said welcome welcome to class feel free to post any questions you have in the chat i'm going to go ahead and take our post our handout into the chat so any questions before we get started All right, so you should be able to download that and view that. Now, I think I'm actually going to change up our handout a little bit here. I think we'll start off with a little bit of, of course, we're going to cover the basics to begin with.
All right, so zoom in here. All right, one suggestion I have with our projects is basically if you if you have uh, maybe my video here on like a little handout, and then you can sit at your main computer and use um, you know our handout and everything. And I'll be flipping back and forth as well. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's talk about what we're going to cover this morning. We're going to be covering uh, what is Scratch, okay? Sign up, log in, everything we cover today. You do not actually have to have a. Uh, hang on, my mouse has disappeared. Where is it? Whoop. Everything we cover today, you do not have to have a sign in if you don't want to. I do suggest having a sign in. The reason that is so that you can save your projects. Okay. Uh, it'll let you save it to the cloud so you can edit it anytime, of course. And that means you can also share your projects too. You do need to, an email address for that. They don't send out any kind of newsletter or any kind of junk mail or anything. Uh, but yeah, but you don't have to to be able to complete all our projects today. So we'll talk about starting scratch. We'll talk about saving projects. We'll talk about our program overview, a little bit of a basic tutorial about using our uh, scratch, and then we'll start with our turkey feather catch game. I'll list some resources at the end. And before we get started, does anybody have any questions? Okay. All right, I will disappear. Ooh, I disappeared. So let's talk about Scratch a little bit. What is Scratch and what can I do with it? So Scratch is a programming language and online community where you can create your own interactive stories, <clears throat> excuse me, games and animations and share your creations with others around the world. In the process of designing and programming Scratch projects, you learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively okay how much does scratch cost scratch is completely free okay do i need a license no you do not uh can i it's hosted by mit's uh website can i sell my scratch projects because it is an open source language actually yes you can okay uh, to learn more about scratch you can check out their light page here and I'm going to show a quick little video right here all right hang on hang on All right, so this is just kind of a quick little intro to Scratch. Here we go. kind of a quick overview of a lot of the things that we can do with Scratch. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's go to scratch.mit.edu. Okay, 
Now, if you want to set up an account, click where it says join Scratch. And you can sign up and create a, your own free account. But if you don't want to, you don't have to for any of the projects we're doing today. All right, so here's Scratch website. And let's go ahead and let's click where it says create. Alright, so let's go back to our handout. Now at any time after you create your project and you're signed in, you want to save it, you can get, click up there where it says untitled, give it a name, click file, and then save now, and it'll save it to the cloud, okay? Let's do a little bit of a program overview here. So basically there's number one where our Scratch the Cat shows up, kind of like their mascot. Our stage shows a quick summary of your game. All active sprites and, and your chosen background will appear here. You can move sprites around if you like. Give your project a name in the field above this, okay? So here's our stage area right here. Number two is where our background is, or backdrop, background dr backdrop area. Number three is where our sprites are, meaning our little characters, where Scratch the Cat is. We also have our work area. Our work area is where all our code goes. That's this area right here. You can zoom in and zoom out as well. And then we have our blocks, okay, and our control buttons, which will be here on the left side is our blocks. One good thing is they're broken up into different categories, but if you're looking for something and you can't find it, just scroll all the way down and you'll be able to see all of the blocks at one time. Here's our control buttons, the, pl the uh, plus, the green flag means on or start project and the stop sign means stop so a lot of projects are actually connected up with when someone clicks the green flag that means to run our project now the big thing about our blocks is they're kind of like legos if the blocks don't go together that means that the code doesn't go together okay so it makes it pretty easy to understand about how the code how you can add on the good thing about it is we're not typing in any kind of uh, major code or anything we're just kind of copying blocks over okay we're going to be talking about our different categories motion looks sound events control sensing operators all right now before we get started we're going to talk about some specific things with this project so let's talk about things good things to know one thing is we'll talk about variables variables will actually allow us to make a countdown clock and do things like keep score okay what is broadcast broadcast will be something new that we'll kind of start using at the end the big thing about broadcast is we are actually going to set it up so when someone clicks the play button, that means that's when our game starts. That's when it's actually going to make uh, the feathers fall from the sky, change the background, and allow our turkey to be seen. Okay? So instead of just clicking the green flag, because anything that's kind of uh, interactive, okay, uh, could actually still be allowed before we wanted the game to start and we want a little bit of an intro screen too. So what is cloning, okay? Cloning is, I want a bunch of feathers to continuously appear at the top and fall uh, to the bottom, okay? That means that we have to tell the computer to make clones of them, okay? So that's what cloning is, okay? Clones or copies. Now here's a big one right here, and we, so we have a nice little chart. In the background, we don't see it. There is one background that you could, or excuse me, backdrop that you could select that will show it, but our coordinates, okay? 
So x position, y position, this is something that we do a lot with in geometry or something. So the big th biggest thing to know about this is uh, 0, 0 is the middle, okay? Uh, x, 0, y, 0 is the middle. And if you wanted the x to go to the left, or excuse me, if you want to go to the left, then you do minus uh, x, and then it'll move to the left, okay? You do plus x, it'll move to the right, okay? If you do minus y, it means that it'll move down, and then plus x means it'll be up, okay? The highest it can go up here is 180, and I believe it's uh, one, minus 180 down there too, okay? All right, that'll make a little bit more sense in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's get started. This is our project that we're planning on making is our turkey catch game. So we use our keyboard to move our turkey left and right, okay? And then we're gonna have these feathers fall from the sky. Now, because this project's using graphics that don't come with, with um, Scratch, let's go ahead and let's open up our starter project. I'm actually gonna post that into the chat so y'all don't have to type that in. So this is only sprites, okay? So our furky, our, our furky, our turkey, our turkey uh, feathers, uh, sprites uh, only. Uh, so that it's not really a game. If you hit the the green flag, it won't do anything, okay? Has no action. But we actually want to open it up. So at any time you open a project and you want to see what's inside, let's go up here and click see what's inside. And it's got nothing inside right now. But it loaded our turkey graphic. It also loaded our feathers that are on there as well. And also we have our turkey sound. <laughs> All right. And we look at costumes. We'll see that we have different feathers. Okay. So if we click our feather, click costumes, you'll see that there are different feathers back there. All right, so let's go back. Now I have the full project right there listed. We don't need to see that yet. And this project is actually based on a YouTube video that was posted, okay? So let's first talk about getting our turkey to move, okay? I'm gonna get him, get him to kind of move left and right. Now, the first thing we're going to drag over here is what's known as a forever. And then we're going to be doing some ifs. If this happens, then this happens. Okay? It's our turkey. I don't want to lose sight of our turkey right there. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and let's drag over one of those forever things. Okay? Well, first, let's do our first little basic uh, project to begin with. Let's have our turkey say hello. Okay? just so that we cover the basics here. All right, one of the first things we should add is we go to events and then we'll see when the green flag is clicked. Let's drag that block over, okay? And then let's go up to where it says looks and it'll say, say hello for two seconds. Let's drag that over. And let's actually click in here and change it to Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Now we'll have him do his uh, sound as well. So let's go ahead and let's click the sound. And then you should see something that says Play Sound Turkey Gobble. Okay. That's it. So we have a lot of interactivity already just by moving over three blocks. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at our turkey full screen. So we can actually go up here. We can play, a, play it at any time. Well, let's, let, we won't do full screen right now. 
let's just go in and click our um, green flag here. Should say Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> there you go. And he said, go. That's it. <laughs> okay, now, so that's our first little project. One, give me one second. All right, so we actually want to delete this. The easiest way to delete something is if we just drag it and then we get over here where our blocks are, let it go, and it's been deleted, okay? We don't really have a trash can to delete stuff. All right, so let's go back to our handout. So first we wanna do is we wanna make sure that it's actually gonna be that we press left and right. Now the big thing is to make sure that we have a forever area here so the computer is always waiting uh, for us to press our keys here. So let's talk about what we're going to program here. First, the computer is going to be waiting. It's going to be in a loop. It's going to be continuously waiting. And then we have an if. So if the right arrow is pressed, then change X to 10. Okay. That means it's going to move it to the right 10 steps. Okay. And then if the key, left key is pressed, then change X to minus 10. Okay, remember those coordinates that we talked about earlier? Well, we can. All we gotta do is do the minus there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create this. Let's create a forever loop to begin with. All right, then what we wanna do is we're gonna add if then one if then right there and another if then right there okay so let's go ahead and let's do our next part let's do an operator oh, excuse me yeah the sensing so do you see how this kind of looks like a uh, it's a weird hexagon it's like kind of stretched it's kind of what it is with the same points this means that if we see the points we can actually drag something that has the points and put it in there, okay? We're looking for one that says key space press. By default, that's what that says. Now, if we wanna change it, we can click the little down arrow here and it'll show a whole bunch of the keys on the keyboard, okay? And we wanna choose one that says to the right. So let's drag that over and you have to hover right on it, mostly where the mouse is and you'll see that it kinda of glows and then let go, okay? So if right arrow is pressed, then do what? Ah, that's right. We want to move him to the right. So let's go to motion. And because we want it to be on the Y axis, we go to the one that says, where is it? Change Y by 10, okay? Now, let's go ahead and it doesn't work yet, does it? Well, we actually have to have this code to be um, activated, okay? We, there's two ways we can activate a code. One, we can actually have the green flag on top of it, okay? Which we're gonna change that to something else later, but we can do that for now green flag on top, or we can actually left click the code, it'll kind of glow yellow, and that means that code is active as well, okay? All right, so I'm gonna click the green flag, and then click to the right, and we should see our turkey moving to the right 
every time I hit. Oh no, how do we bring him back? Well, we have to finish our code, don't we? Okay, so let's go ahead and finish our code. So if key to the left is pressed, now we'll go to motion, move, excuse me, um, change, change X by minus 10. Okay. Now, as long as this is growing yellow, you're still good to go. Now, if we'll do our keyboard to the left, there he comes back. Wee. And already we have a little bit of interaction, don't we? All right. So. Now that we got our turkey walking, when we hit the green flag, turkey walking, turkey walking. All right, so let's hit the stop. Let's go to our next part in our code. Now that we've got him walking, Now let's go ahead and let's add our variables, okay? So we're gonna actually add three variables to our game. Remember what our game looked like? It says our score on here, okay? Meaning how many turkey feathers you caught. We also have our timer that counts down. And that's when we want our game to end, okay? Now, we also want it so we miss if we miss any feathers, we want that to happen as well. So let's go ahead and let's make these three variables. So let's go to our section here. And we actually want to do this on the backdrop. So let's click the backdrop, okay. And let's go to where it says variables and click make a variable. Now the first one we should make is score. Okay. So once I hit enter, you'll see the score shows up on the screen and also sh score is sh it shows up here as well. All right, so we've got score Let's do feathers missed next. Feathers missed. And then let's add our final one. What is it? It's time left. Okay, now let's drag the time left up to the top right over there. Okay. Now if we do want if we don't want it to have the text on there, if we double click, it'll actually just change it to a number. Okay. I'm gonna we'll do file and save. Right now it says remix, but that means save too. Okay, now, now that we have made our variables, then when we actually create our other code, it actually will be able to interact with those, okay? So right now we're on the stage, okay? And our big thing is we're gonna make our countdown clock. 
So our countdown clock isn't really a clock, okay? It's a little bit of a trick. And what I mean by that is, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have it so that what happens is we have these on the screen and we actually have to set them. So when they show up, we have to set the timer to 60, okay? We have to set the uh, feathers missing to zero, so that starts that over. We also have to set our score to zero, so let's do that. And right now we're gonna do it um, with the uh, set, and make sure you're on the, the background stage. So set feathers missed to zero, okay. We'll do the time left. I'll get the, so it looks just like that. So if we drag the set, with the drop down arrow, say time left, set. Uh, we need it to be set to 60 is what we need. So it'll start at 60 and then our score should be set to zero as well. Now, what we're gonna do next is, we're actually gonna make it, a repeat happens 60 times, and the repeat is gonna interact with the time left, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it every second, we're gonna make it wait a second every second, it's going to subtract one number from the time left. And it'll, so that way, it'll actually look like it's counting down the seconds, but it's really just going through the loop 60 times. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's get our loop. So repeat is what we want. The one under con, uh, control, repeat 10, and we're going to change it to 60. Let me zoom in here so it's a little bigger. And then we're going to add wait one second. So wait one second. Okay. Then we want to add a uh, change time left by minus one, okay? So let's go to variable, say change, time left to minus one, okay? All right, so let's click on our project here and see if it, the countdown clock starts to work. There we go, it's working. Very good. All right, so when it reaches zero, that means it'll stop because we've only told it to repeat it 60 times. Now, if you keep doing that, it'll start being a, a minus number, which we don't want that, okay? So I'm just gonna click again to stop the code. Or I'll, I'll, I'll click it and let that play in the background here. We'll talk about our next part. Now for our next part, we actually have our final code. So we're gonna walk through this together, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually change our, our background and we're gonna create a background as well. And we're actually gonna add a button, okay? So we need to add a background. So let's go ahead and let's go to background drops, excuse me. And we're going to click right there where it says choose a backdrop and it's gonna show us all our pre-made backdrops that come with Scratch. 
And we're looking for the one that says hay field. You see it? There it is. All right, now that we have a new background, now believe it or not, we're actually gonna be using two different backgrounds. So let's go to backdrops. And we'll see one, one is the blank one, okay? One says Hayfield. Now, let's go ahead and click the, the backdrop that basically is white right now, and we're actually gonna do some text on there that says turkey feather catch game. We're actually gonna add a button that says play, okay? And then later we're gonna use our broadcaster so that when we click the play button, that's when our game will actually start, okay? We're gonna kinda be using the green flag as more of a reset than to actually make it the start of the game, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and hit the T here. Make sure you're on backdrop, and let's change our color where it says fill. Let's click that and change it to black, okay? Now, let's click here. And just type in turkey feather. Turkey feather catch game, okay? Right around here looks good. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and we're gonna make our game over backdrop. Now, how do we create a new backdrop? Go down here and it says choose a backdrop and click where it says paint instead. Okay, so here and then paint. And now we should have backdrop two. And let's click their text. And this time let's click about the same area and say game over. Whoop, I'm gonna change my text color to black. And if you need to kind of move it around, you wanna make it bigger, grab the ends and kind of drag and drop a little bit. There we go. Whatever you want to do, you can do like little drawings or something like that if you want to. Okay, so now that we actually have backdrop one, is our turkey feather catch game, we have our hay field, and then we'll actually have where it says game over, okay? All right, so let's go ahead, and next we're actually gonna be adding uh, one thing now we need to go ahead and hide our turkey okay so let's talk about hiding the turkey because we don't want our turkey to show up right at the beginning okay we're actually going to hide our turkey so let's click the turkey and this time what I want it to do is we're actually going to get rid of where at the top here where it says when the green flag is clicked, let's drag that over there. And now let's add uh, a control that says when the flag is clicked, we're actually gonna hide our turkey. So let's talk about our, our, our 
I guess you'd say options over here. First, it shows our turkey name. Our sprite's name is turkey. It also shows the location of our turkey with our axes. Okay. Right here, this is where we can show or hide the turkey. It also talks about the size. Let's say you want the turkey to be smaller. You just change it to 75. If you want it to be bigger, here's 200. Boom, it's bigger. But we want it to stay the size of this, so we're going to make it 100. Okay. There's also pointing in which direction you want the turkey to be in. If you want something to turn or whatever, that's what it'll talk about as well. Okay. But the default is set to 90. Okay. All right. So we need to go ahead and what we need to do is to start our game because we're going to actually have it set. So it says turkey feather catch game and there's going to be a button and you click play. So right now we actually need to hide our turkey. Because that's where our button will be later. So hide our turkey. And let's drag one called sense. Oh, excuse me. Let's go to one that says looks. And you'll see one on here that says hide. Okay. So we want when the green flag is clicked for it to hide the turkey. Okay. So hide that turkey. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next part. So we have completed everything except for one thing at the top here. But we've completed everything on our uh, turkey here, except for, well, there's two other parts there. But we're going to come back to that. But let's go ahead down here and let's create our button, okay? So let's click on our background. Okay, now we're actually going to add our own sprite. So let's go to the cat down here and then let's click the draw button. Now it should be, our fill should be set to black and we actually want to draw a box. So let's click here where it says rectangle. And draw a box. Whoop. Hold on, I guess I need, here's our undo button, so if you do make any mistakes, I guess we need our fill to be white. So I'm gonna move around my colors here until I can find a white on there. All right, then draw a little box. <laughs> That's not working either, hold on. We need our outline to be black, so that's our border. Okay, so set this to white and you have your outline set to black. And then when we draw our box, we should get a nice. Okay, hold on. Why doesn't it have. Hmm. Wheel. not what I want hold on so I'm trying to draw a box I want our field to be white so when I draw my box nope will is it because it needs to be thicker okay that's what it is okay so make sure Let's see how thick do I want to be. That's fine. Two or three up here will be fine. In the previous class, we did a little bit of drawing, so it's changed our buttons a little bit from what the default is. So make sure this is white. Make sure this is black. And then make sure this is about three. So when you draw your box, it'll have a nice, you know, border on the outside of it. Okay. Now, we're actually going to be doing this on the costume oh that doesn't matter right now so let's try to get it in the middle as much as we can our button and then let's add some text and the text is going to say play
Oh, and we need to change our fill to black for our text. No, it's not what I'm telling you to do. Make sure you don't have it selected. And then our fill should be black. There we go. So now, and if you need to, go right ahead. And let's move that kind of to the middle. Okay. Now, what are we actually going to see at the beginning? Well, let's click where it says Stage and change to our first backdrop, and it'll say Turkey Feather Catch Game. And our... And we can move our sprite around if we need to. All right, now, once you finish that and switch the costume, or the stage costume, back to costume one, then you should actually see where we actually have a nice play button. It's got a nice border around it, very easy to understand. All right, so let's go ahead back and let's start code for our play button. Okay, so we need to have when the flag is clicked and we want to make sure that the button's in the right place So that's what we'll do and then we'll tell it to show the button because later we're going to tell it to hide the button. Okay All right, so let's click the button and then let's click code All right, so let's put a when the flag is clicked Then let's click motion and we want the it to go to a certain point now the easiest thing to do here is once you have you move your sprite to where you want it to be because when I do that you'll actually see the coordinates change here and the coordinates change there as well so once you get your sprite where you want it to be anything like this where you're telling something to move there Go ahead and move your character there and then it'll automatically set the coordinates for you and then when I drag it out here it's already set okay all right and then we want it to make to hide it okay let me excuse show and let's get the looks the one that says show and drag it right there all right, our next one is, right now we're not gonna do in the broadcast stuff because we're gonna do all that at the same time, okay? All right, so we have it so that when, we actually click the green flag, our turkey is hidden just in case we have our turkey you know, seeing it, so we hit the green flag. It pops up. Our turkey hides. And we have our nice feather uh, catch game sign. We also have play, which we're going to switch that in just a minute too. Okay. All right, so let's go on to our feather. And we'll also talk about creating our broadcast as well. So we actually have all our numbers going on. Oh, and we let's go ahead to our background because I want to make sure the background is uh, set properly first. Okay. So let's talk about doing our broadcast. So what we want to do is we want to set it up so uh, the button when we click the sprite, it'll actually broadcast to everybody play instead of doing the classic green flag. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this one.
All right, so when this sprite is clicked, we want it to broadcast the word play, okay? So let's go ahead and let's create that now. So let's go to events and say, make sure that you're on the, the, um, the play. So we're gonna click where it says sprite and we're gonna go ahead and rename this play. So we all know that's the play button. So we have our, let's click our sprite and then let's drag over when this sprite is clicked and like I said, we're going to deal with a new thing, which is our broadcast. And we're going to make it so that it's going to do a broadcast. So we need to click our broadcast, okay? We're gonna drag broadcast over here and we need to make a new message. So let's click our drop down, and we're gonna say new message. And our new message will be play and hit okay. So that's what our broadcast will be, play. And then later we'll say received what message and then that means that this should start okay now I'm not sure why we have hide on there um, but I oh I know what that is that's the hide our button okay so after it does that then make our button hide okay so when I click play it's going to broadcast the word play and it's also going to hide okay so it's important to know, okay, so we can test that out real quick. So I start the game, I hit the green flag. It's gonna have play right there, it's gonna show play. And when I click the play button, it's going to broadcast play, which we don't have anything it cannot talking to yet, but also hide our button, okay? So the only way to bring the button back is to hit the green flag and it starts over again, okay? All right, so let's go back up to our turkey, okay? And we're actually gonna have it show the turkey and get our arrows to allow the turkey to move around, okay? Now we already have the turkey set so he'll hide when we hit the green flag. Whoop, went too far, hold on. Let's click our turkey. Turkey, 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 turkey. Let's go to control. Excuse me, events. And let's go to brag, uh, broadcast. Oh, when I receive the broadcast play, okay, we want it to show our turkey. So here's show. And allow the turkey to move left and right, okay? So let's go ahead and try that out now, okay? So I click the green flag, it starts, I hit the play button, and then our turkey shows up and now you can move him left to right, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's hit stop. Now we'll come back to this one here. Let's go ahead and let's talk about our background, okay, and getting our background to change. So
All right, so let's go ahead and let's switch to the backdrop. And what we're going to do is, when I click the, click the green flag, now this is actually inaccurate, so I'm actually going to change that. When I click the green flag, I want to make sure that it's showing. So if I click the backdrop, I'm going to move here and do one that says when the green flag is clicked, I want to make sure it's on the turkey feather catch game. Okay, so when the green flag is clicked, let's set something that says set switch, switch backdrop. Now our backdrop is actually set that turkey feather catch is number one. So that's actually the one that we want. Okay, so even if the background's different, when I click the flag, it should hide the turkey and also show us turkey feather catch game. Okay. And then when I click the play button, the turkey should show up and we can move even left and right right now. Okay. Now, let's keep going here. So when I click the play button, I actually want the background to change. Okay. To the hay field don't we okay so let's do that make sure we're on the background here so when it receives that broadcast when I receive the broadcast of play and I'm not done yet I want it to switch background to the hay field. Okay. Switch the background to the hay field. Now we're not doing we're not with the ready with the done yet because that's actually going to be part of our well well we can do that now too. Let's see. Yeah, that probably is a good idea to go ahead and talk about that. Let's see. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add our done and add our switch the backdrop and also our stop as well because we're already here, okay? What the done will do is the done when the clock, the timer is up, okay? That actually will broadcast everything that the the game basically has finished, okay? So that's what the done broadcast will do. So let's go ahead and let's add that. So let's go to our events, go to broadcast, and what we want to do is we want to create a new broadcast called done. You could make this game over or something like that if you wanted to. So broadcast done and then switch the background to the one that says game over. So we'll say sw look, switch let's see where are you? Is it? Oh it's a costume yeah. Switch background to background 2. Okay, let me zoom out just a bit here. Backdrop two. I know that says one, but two is our game over. And then we want everything to stop. So the stop all, make sure everything stops. Any scripts that I have will be stopped. Okay. And that is under events. Is it under events or control? Let me see. It's under control. Let's go drag it over here. It says stop all. Okay. Now, the big thing about this is, here's our countdown clock, okay? We have it starting when we click the play button. We also have it so that it's gonna to switch to the hay when we click the play button. It's gonna set up all our timers and everything in our score, and then it's gonna start our countdown clock immediately, okay? 
right when I hit the play button, it's going to start. When it finishes or moves down to the next part here, it's going to broadcast the word done, which we're going to interact with that in a little bit. Change our background to background two, the one that says game over, and then it's going to say stop all. Okay. So let's try it out. So if I hit the green flag, our play button shows up. We click play. Boom, it switches the background. Our turkey shows up and our countdown clock is is clicking ahead there okay I don't have anything to catch yet now do we no not yet we're gonna go ahead and do that in the next part but the big thing is we now know when we click the green flag everything will start over and switch back um, because we also have it so the turkey disappears the background resets and we'll also um, set this later uh, to disappear as well okay so um, I'm trying to remember yeah so I think there's like an extra set that we can do to make our score disappear we don't have to do that right now okay so we've got five four three two one and switch game over did you notice our turkey did not disappear? Because <laughs> we've got to set that broadcast now, don't we? But if we click the green flag, there we go. It kind of starts everything over. Okay. All right. So we're done with our, our push button sprite here. We're also done with our background, aren't we? Okay. So let's move up. Now, when the if the turkey receives the fl uh, the done, it should hide. Remember, he was on the screen there. Okay. All right. So let's go to the broadcast. When I receive broadcast done, then we want it to hide. Oops, sorry. We need to click our turkey. Click our turkey. So when I receive the broadcast of done, then we want it to hide. Hide our turkey, okay? So that means when the countdown clock reaches zero, it's going to hide the turkey and the game will for surely be over. Now, let's go ahead to our next part. One of our more complicated parts, which is about our our feather okay the big one here is we want to set it that when I receive the play meaning I click the play button I want it to actually uh, not show make sure the feathers are not seen okay until the game actually starts that's why we have a hide and a show here okay so don't let that confuse you that's all that really is so to make sure it doesn't show the feathers too early so let's go right ahead now this is actually going to do we'll do this second okay this is actually controls uh, how quickly our feathers come down okay is basically what that is okay this creates our clone which is here okay well, let's create this first because we need to create the clone uh, to get started with that this creates our clone okay this also chooses how many clones are come down at one time. Want a harder game? Make the make it less so that more of them will come out. Okay, quicker. Right, and we're actually going to be using the random. So let's go ahead and let's create this. So we want to go to our feathers. And we want to create the event. So when I receive the play, the 
the play command. All right, when I receive the play, okay, I want to make sure that the, the feathers are hidden so you can't see them until they're supposed to be coming down. All right. So we want to do looks, make sure it hides. Next part is I want to set up a forever loop so it'll be continuously just waiting there and it'll just continuously keep doing it because we don't have to tell it when to stop doing the, tur the, the feathers because the script on the countdown clock will tell all scripts to stop, remember? All right, so we need to put in a forever loop. And we need to add a wait, okay? This is just like the normal seconds, okay? So if we go up to Let's see. Yeah, wait. But we don't want it to wait. Whoop. We don't want it to wait one second, do we? We actually want it to be a random amount of time for the feathers to appear. Okay. You could set this, but it would be a bit of a boring game if you did that. So let's go to operators and let's choose one that says pick random. Now I drag it. Now you see how it's a curved circle, like a big oval? Well, there you go right there. Now, what we want to do is we want to make it 0.5 to 3 seconds. So 0.5 to 3 seconds. Okay. And then the next thing we want to add is create a clone of myself. So every, basically we're setting up a little timer here. Every half a second to three seconds, create a clone of myself, okay? Create a clone. Now you can, you know, create more than one of these, but I just need the, the clone of myself because we're already on the feather okay so I don't need a clone of any other sprite okay now so, so we got the create the clone of myself let's go ahead to our next part and we need to create this so that uh, when it's done it'll hide all the feathers okay All right, so when I receive the broadcast of done, I want to make sure that it hides. So this will make, make sure all the feathers are hidden so they won't be still falling off the screen or something, okay? I mean, so you won't see them on the screen. They, they should stop when they, we do the code that says stop because the timer reaches zero. So that shouldn't be an issue. All right, so when I start a clone, let's see, there it is. When I start a clone, bring in the clones. We want it to go to a certain position, okay? Now remember I told you 180 is at the top, okay? Now the minus uh, 240 to 240 is for X, so that means that left or right, and 180 will be at the very top, okay? Whoop, hang on. So we want go to X and we also want the Y and then put the pick random there and 180 is what our Y is, okay? 
All right, and we are still on the feather. Oh, we need the motion. There we go. Go to X and Y. So let's drag that over there. We're actually going to make our Y our Y 180. Okay, so it'll be at the very top. And then we're actually going to put a pick random, make it minus 24 uh, to, to 240. Okay. So that's the uh, range, I guess that's what we're trying to go for. Okay, where is my random? It's operator. We've got minus, what do we start with? Yeah, minus, of course. Two, 240. So this is how you get it to make random things, okay? You need a bit of, bit of randomization in a game so that you know you don't know what to expect. All right, now let's talk about our costumes, okay? Well, what are you talking about costumes? Okay, well, the costumes, if we click feather and we click costumes, there actually are different looking feathers on here, okay? And we want it to choose a different feather so it looks different when it comes down, okay? trying to bypass us. So that's what this does. Switch costumes to, and the, the random will actually let it choose. Now why does it say five on there? The reason it says five is because you will see one, two, three, four, five different costumes, okay? All right, so let's go back to switch costume to, All right, give it a second, it'll take care of that. So let's see, switch. Yeah, switch costume to, and because it's an oval, we can put the random on there. Excuse me, operator. So pick random, see how that works? And one to five. Okay, I don't know why it's saying that, but it should work in a minute. All right, so switch costume, one to five. Now, after it does all that, we want it to sh make sure it shows the feather. Okay. Shows the feather. Now we're doing We're, we're choosing its motion. We're also choosing its interactivity with our turkey, okay? So let's look at our motion. So we want it to repeat until it reaches the very bottom. The very bottom, remember we, we set it up for the very top of Y is 180, and the very bottom is minus 180, okay? Now this will actually uh, change its, uh, this is creating, okay. Let me see if I can get it to do that. See, so this is creating. This creates and then this tells it where to go, okay? So we're gonna have repeat until, okay, meaning this, 
and this is actually going to tell us the motion. This is actually our interactivity with our turkey. Okay, so we're going to add that next. Okay. All right, so we need to add repeat until where is that? There it is. Repeat until okay. Repeat until, and we need to have a less than. less than we want to do y position okay so it knows where it is and then this is negative 180 okay So we want it to keep repeating. It's kind of like a forever loop. It's a little worded a little bit differently. So keep repeating this until it reaches the Y position minus 80. Okay. And when it does, remember this is going to be making it uh, move. Okay. So when it does, what do we want it to do? We want it to, to uh, then complete this next part here. Okay. So this is going to keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. And then once it, it attains this part here, it's going to go to the next part. Okay. And then it'll delete itself. Okay. All right. So let's now add change Y by... Oh, what do I need? I need uh, oh, it's blue. Okay. All right. So, whoop. so change Y by, and we actually need a random on there minus four minus five oh six says six sorry so this is actually kind of changing this is our motion. This is the and the uh, the random kind of chooses its speed. Okay. All right. Now let's add a if. Well, let's not do that yet. And then we'll let's just do this part. So let's change our feather miscount by one. Okay. by one and then we want to add delete this clone delete this clone okay now let's go ahead now one of the things going to happen is our turkey's not going to have any interactivity with our feathers yet. Okay, so let's do green flag. Let's do play. Here comes. I can move the turkey. Oh no! It's not working. No, that we haven't made the interactivity with the turkey yet.
Okay, hold on. Let's wait, do our little countdown here. Okay, so they look like they're falling, falling pretty good. They're pretty randomized. Now, you could change this part here if you want it to be uh, more on the screen. Okay. All right, we got 10 seconds almost. And when it touches the bottom, it deletes itself. And it looks like the feather mist calculator is doing pretty good. There you go, game over, and it stopped everything, didn't it? Okay. So it did it. All right, now let's actually add the part of our actual interactivity with our game. Okay. So we need to if then. Alright, if then, if touching turkey, sensing, if touching turkey, then start sound. Start sound, so it should play the little gobble when he catches the turkey, okay? All right, now let's let it to change our score by a one. See, change score by one. And then we also want it to, when it touches the turkey, to delete the clone. Let's see, where is that? Here, let's delete the clone. All right, I believe we have a game now. Let's go ahead and see if we can see it full screen. And let's click our green flag turkey feather catch game in a minute we might get these to uh, disappear at the beginning all right let's see oh it's working it's working the score's going up So, so how many can we get? Miss one feather to make sure that's working too. See? <laughs> All right. So everything disappeared. The feather disappeared, the turkey disappeared, and everything stopped. So our final score was 32, only missed one feather. Okay. And if we hit the flag, everything should reset. Okay. Or when I hit play, it'll reset. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Now, what I want to do is at the beginning, I actually want these to be, uh, um, well, you can't see them is what I want, only after the play button, okay? So we should add something to the effect of, when the green flag is clicked, 
it'll say show variable, hide variable, hide. Let me see, hide score, hide. Uh, the, we did the, the time left and then hide feathers missed okay so watch this boom so now it has a nice clean slate the only thing is we needed those to come back when we click the play button so we need to set show, make it show so show time left show score and show feathers missed okay now hit the green flag we hit play boom they show back up and our game is running Could make the sound random by the way too. So it's not the same sound. Alright, perfect. Game over and it all finished and everything. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we actually completed our project and it's working great, okay? So before we kind of wrap up class here, see if anybody has any other questions. All right, so any questions? All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to wrap up class here. Talk about some of our other programs that we have coming up. A big one is that you can also uh, go in and look at some of the other projects people have done with Scratch. There are some basic tutorials on there, some great getting started tutorials as well. You, of course, can click the Explore button on Scratch. I'm going to hit the Save Now on mine. And if I go back to the main Scratch section, you can click Explore.
and then you can actually go to the section here and search for turkey <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of fun games that people have made and you can also remix them and see what the code is on the inside as well as well got some other information here um, some other resources in the handout making your own Mario game uh, a little bit more about the coordinates as well Star Wars sprites that are out there that you could use to make your own games and also top five scratch games that are very popular a little bit more about the drag and drop visual programming and if you want to go further than this some other coding classes as well okay alright so we're actually going to wrap up class for today so we've got some other classes coming up, of course, uh, this month, our month of November. Come join me for the class this afternoon. It's going to be holiday gadget and gift ideas uh, to get you started. It kind of goes in connection with our internet shopping and digital couponing class uh, we did yesterday. Next week, we're only going to be doing two classes because of Thanksgiving uh, coming up. One is eBay and Facebook Marketplace, uh, Internet Buying and Selling on the 24th. And then on the 25th in the morning, we're going to be doing Let's Make a Turkey Feather Catch Game again. So come join me for that. And then we'll be finishing off with our other Thanksgiving Day program, Let's Draw and Animate a Turkey. On the Thursday, excuse me, on the 26th is Thanksgiving. So do you realize we're going to be uh, taking off Thanksgiving, of course, and for the rest of the month. And we'll have other classes posted next week as well, talking about December classes. We might be doing some stuff with Blender, so come join me with that. And also we'll be doing some animation, maybe making some 3D snowman models and then animating them. Okay. So as we wrap up class here, just want to let you know our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we'll get our own customized YouTube address. Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and you'll find us right there okay <laughs> hello <laughs> so for thank you for coming today and I will see you guys next time Hopefully this afternoon, stay safe, <laughs> and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>